All right, so we're going to continue trying to find area between two curves. And in this particular case, we've got y equals 16 minus x squared and x squared minus 2 is our two functions. So let's take a look at both of these. The big question for you is which one is which? Which one of these is the top function? Which one of them is the bottom function? Uh, if it has a negative x squared, what do you know about your parabola? Has to open down, right? So top one's going to be this one. And the bottom one is going to be this one. We want to find the area between these two curves. So we're going to stick what we're doing before my video crapped out on me. And that is we're going to take a slice and try and find the area of that one slice. So that area is going to be really just the area of a rectangle. So this right here, area of one rectangle. is going to be your top function minus your bottom function times the width. I don't expect all this on, on your exam papers, but I should see some work, enough to make me happy. Your top function is the 16 minus x squared. Your bottom function is your x squared minus 2. What's the width of this? How wide is that rectangle? DX. dx. Thank you. Just dx. It's delta x, but for this application, we're going to use the dx. Now, if I combine like terms, I'll have a minus 2x squared and a plus 2 here. That plus 2 will combine here, so I'll end up with 18 minus 2x squared dx. Okay, looking good there. Let's set up an integral. So that's going to be an integral of 18 minus 2x squared dx. Of course, we need to figure out the limits of integration. How are we going to figure out the limits of integration? I mean, this graph isn't marked. How do I know where these things cross each other? Yeah, you're going to make them equal to each other. So we're going to take 16 minus x squared and set it equal to x squared minus 2. What I'll do is I'll add x squared to both sides and I'll add 2 to both sides. Adding 2 to both sides is going to put an 18 over here. Adding x squared to both sides is going to put a 2x squared over here. Divide by 2, you get 9. Take the square root, you get plus or minus 3 equals x. So minus 3 and plus 3. Those would be your limits of integration, negative 3 to 3. Let me notice something else for you about this particular problem. 18 minus 2x squared. This is an even function, and the reason I notice that is because we've got a symmetric interval. Now, in this particular case, I'm going to let you use your graphing calculator to calculate this, but... You know, if you're stuck doing this by hand for some reason, you could say, all right, well, that's really twice the integral from 0 to 3 of that same integrand. So I didn't leave myself room for the 2 here. Let me try that again. Twice the integral from 0 to two, uh, 3 of 18 minus 2x squared dx. And again, for our polynomial functions, let's just do that part on our calculator. I don't want you to get these things wrong because you make a mistake with your arithmetic. I trust that you can find the antiderivative of a polynomial. So we'll go to the math menu, math 9, integrate from 0 to 3 of 18 minus 2x squared 
and then go over here and put in the DX. That's almost our answer. What else do I need to do? Times two, so 72. And that's your answer. Nice. How's that one looking? Doing okay on these so far? I think they seem pretty good. Now, my insistence on this part is not so much for this section as it is for the next section. Doing that DX slice and that DY slice can help you keep things in check. So let's see. Overall, we ended up with 72 here. Great. Comments or thoughts on example D here? When you set them equal to each other, yes. it's just the equivalent of doing top minus bottom anyways. So can you just take the equation from that? Mm, not, uh, I don't know that, well, let's see, is it being necessarily the same top minus bottom? Well, top minus bottom equals zero is what it's equivalent to, uh, but that's that's also equal to setting them equal to each other. So, for instance, as you just the process of doing the thing, you just take it, put it in here and found and set it equal to zero, right? F of x. Well, if I set f of x minus g of x equal to each other, then that's the same thing as saying f of x minus g of x equals zero. Okay. So, so they're exactly equivalent. Yeah, so you can top minus bottom, you can think of it that way, figure out where top minus bottom is zero. So, yeah, they are the same thing. Let's look at example E. This one's going to have kind of an interesting result here for us. So we've got two functions, y equals x cubed and y equals x. Of course, the line y equals x has to be this straight line function, so y equals x cubed is our other one. Let's kind of squeeze in a little rectangle for ourselves. So I'll do that. And I want to find the area of one rectangle. Let me change things up a little bit here. Area of one rectangle. And let's do this. So just like the last one, it's going to be top minus bottom. And it looks like we're still going to be able to take a DX slice. So we're okay there. I'll just put that DX slice in right away. What's the top function? What should I put in here for top? Top minus bottom. Is it x cubed? Or x? Which one's the top function here? x. Bottom would be minus x cubed. dx. So looking good there. And this one's a little bit more user friendly than the last one. Can anyone tell me why? Um, yeah, you can kind of see your limits of integration here, right? It's going to be from negative 1 to 1. So that's looking good. Now take out your calculators and do that and see what happens. Tell me what answer you get. So take out calculator, do math 9. Plug in all the information. Let's clear this all out. Math 9, negative 1 to 1 of x minus x cubed dx. What are you getting? Kayla, what would you get? Zero. Zero. Does it make sense that the area could be zero? Can we have a zero for an area? No, no. There's, there's always going to be a positive area between two curves. The only way you have zero is if there's just no area between the two curves. But there's going to be a positive area between these two curves. 
So the fact that I'm getting a zero is a little disconcerting. You should always get a positive value. Now, if you had these things reversed, if you're doing bottom minus top and you got a negative number, you should look back and go, wait a minute, something looks wrong. You should get a positive answer for every single one of these problems. Now, the fact that we don't is because we made a little bit of a mistake here just doing top minus bottom from the interval of negative 1 to 1. Can anyone tell me why? What's wrong here? Uh, I heard a couple. Now he's got it. Yeah. What is it? It switches, so the x cubed becomes the top. And yeah. The top and the bottom function change here. So you could do this in one of two ways. You could split this up as the integral from 0 to 1 of what we have here, plus the integral from negative 1 to 0 of pretty much the same thing, except the order here is going to be reversed. In this particular case, another thing you can do, because this area and this area are going to be the same, is you could write this as the integral from 0 to 1 of x minus x squared dx, and then double it. But this gives me a 0, and that's a non-starter. Your answers are going to be positive numbers. If you get a negative number, there's a mistake. If you get 0, there's a mistake. By the way, there's another reason you could have forecast this answer here. If you look, you've got a symmetric interval. Um, no, 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 never mind. It's not an odd function. I was thinking it would be the odd function rule. No, that, it's x to the power of 3. Is that not? Uh, oh, yeah, this should be a power of 3. Yeah, it is an odd function. It's an odd function over a symmetric interval, so the answer is going to be 0. So you can figure out that would have been a 0. Let's go back and rework this. Now, kind of a clever way to do this is you hit the second key, then the entry key. And that brings up your previous calculation. I'm just going to go back and make this lower limit a 0. So I'll put in a 0 there, delete that. Now, that's close to my answer. But it's not completely my answer. Why not? Yeah, you're going to multiply by 2. I think we can see that that's 1 half. Nice. All right, looking good there. Let's try example F. Example F is certainly where you're going to need your graphing calculator. So we want to try and find the area between these two curves. First one is sine of x over 1 plus x squared. The second one is y squared over 1 plus x cubed. But boy, I can't tell you exactly which function is which. You know, both of them are going to meet at 0. But I don't know which one's the top function, which one's the bottom function. I'm guessing that the... One in yellow might be the top function, but I don't know. So let's put those into our calculator and graph it. So I'll clear out my equation editor. Let's put in some functions. It's going to be sine of x, close parentheses, divided by parentheses, 1 plus x squared, close parentheses. Can you uh, go through process of doing it, not knowing, just choosing one arbitrarily, and if it comes out negative, you know you chose wrong? Uh, you're going to need the calculator on this one either way. So I'm just going to go ahead and plug in uh, the calculator. But you're right, if you ended up with a negative number, chances are it's because you have the top and bottom reversed. All right, so that would work. Now, our other one, let me be a little bit more fancy. If you want to avoid some parentheses, you can hit the alpha and y equals key. The first option there allows you to plug in a regular fraction. So I wanted x squared over 1 plus x cubed. There's my two functions. As far as my window is concerned, well, let's take a look at our graph. Our graph goes to a little bit past 0.8. So 
So I'm going to go from, say, 0 to 1 on the x-axis. So 0 to 1. And on the y-axis, well, I want to go a little bit higher than, say, 0.5. Eh, 0.5 should actually be close enough. So 0 to 0.5. Certainly, I don't want x scaled or y scale to be 50 anymore. I'll do that as 0.1. And likewise, I'll use x scale as 0.2. So there's pretty good. Let's clear this all out. There's your two graphs. But the big question is, well, which one's which? Which one's your top function? Which one's your bottom function? Well, if you don't know, take a look back at your equation editor. Notice that the first graph is in blue. So that one's your sine of x divided by 1 plus x squared, and the other one is in red. So that's which graph is which. So we can set up our top and bottom functions pretty easily. I'm going to kind of skip some of the stuff that I've been doing for these previous ones. Let's just do our top minus bottom function. That's going to be sine of x over 1 plus x squared minus x squared over 1 plus x cubed. And that's going to be a dx. But I'm going to run into a harder part here. What's going to be the hard part about a problem like this? Say so again, what's going to be the hard part here for us? Finding the intersection point at the yeah. point A. Getting this intersection point. Now I can see one of the intersection points, right? Or where's where's uh, the lower limit for my rectangle here? Zero. So let's draw in our little rectangle here. I neglected that. I do still want to see that. So that's going to be dx. Here's your top minus bottom times the width. So looking good there. The lower limit is 0, but the upper limit, eh, don't know. Yeah, we're going to use our calculator on that. So for right now, I'm just going to call that a. And I give you some instructions down here to remind you on how to find that point if you needed to. So once you graph things, Hit the second key, then the calculate key. What is it that we're looking for? Intersection. Now, if you're not keeping up with this, let me pause here for a second, because you need to keep up with this. This is something I expect of you, is to be able to find the intersection point and to use it in your limits of integration. So if anyone needs to catch up, here's a good time. All right, looks like Anyone who's interested is already with me. So if you want to find the intersection point, you're going to go close to that intersection point, and you're going to end up pressing enter a total of three times. The first one says, all right, here's my guess from the first curve. And then you do the same thing for the second curve. And then annoyingly, it wants a third guess. So just press enter again. You don't have to get terribly close. So your point of intersection is about 0.82733, etc. Now, the good news is that we don't really have to remember that. Um, I'm just going to write it down 0 0.827335. Uh, but your calculator has this value, value stored in X. So I'm going to exit this screen and just type the X key. There is that value. You don't have to retype it or anything like that. Now for convenience and just ease of presentation, I'm gonna store this value in a different location. So hit the store key and then the alpha key and the math key. That's gonna store it in A. It just gives me a, a nice location for that. So if you're trying to keep up with the, the calculations, you can see my keystrokes here on the bottom. Let me move that up a little bit maybe. Press enter. And now let's do our numerical integration. 
So that would be math 9, fn int from 0 up to a, second alpha a. Now at this point, you're free to do one of two things. You can type in the functions like they appear here, sine x over 1 plus x squared minus x squared over 1 plus x cubed, and then type in the dx. That's fine. Nothing wrong with that. That will work. Let me show you a, a little bit easier way to do that, though. I want to put in the difference of my two functions. Those two functions, let's just take kind of a quick peek here. Those two functions are in y1 and y2. Let me get back out of here. I can just type y1 and y2 in my integrand. You can do that from the vars menu. Vars, cursor to the right once to get y vars, and press enter, there's your y1. Minus, and if you miss it the first time, here it is again to get that y value. Y value. Vars, cursor to the right once for y vars, press enter, this time I want y2. And then that's relative to dx. When you get that, press enter and you should be golden. So this integral equals about 0 0.097866. So, yay. How many were able to get that number off their calculator? All right, a good number of you. I hope the rest of you either watch this video at some point or get some help on that because this is something I expect from you. All right, any comments or thoughts on example F here? I'm gonna split this up into two videos. Let's take a break here.